If we look at the industries and technologies that form our advanced society, so many of those industries sit on a foundation of chemistry, physics and math. Whether that is the drug molecule, the fuel, the catalyst, the fertilizer, the semiconductor manufacturing process, and they are actually severely overdue for reinvention. I'm in the habit of provoking people, including professors of chemistry, with the claim that we can't actually start doing chemistry until we have a quantum computer. We are stumbling around in the dark when it comes to designing drugs and materials. We don't know how lots of things work. There's just things that are just out of sight. If you can't simulate the building blocks of the world that you find around you, never mind the building blocks of the world that you want to engineer, then what are you doing? The pitch was that you need a million qubits to build a machine that is going to be the most profoundly world-changing technology that humans have ever encountered. And that pitch has not changed in eight years. You have to get to that scale. You need a million qubits. You need error correction and how it has to work. Once you get that, it's incredibly powerful. Up until that, it's like, don't get around. The focus in quantum architecture is getting a design for an architecture which can tolerate as much error as possible with as small a footprint as possible. We are laser focused on getting to fault tolerance. We're always going to be pushing those numbers, pushing the loss tolerance and pushing the footprint. One of the most underestimated elements in quantum computing is that if you want to go to the large scales that are necessary, you have to interconnect. And the best interconnects are photons at telecom frequency. There's a few things that make working with quantum error correction with photons a really nice platform. We can network with regular optical fiber and our chips, of course, are built in a commercial semiconductor foundry. Indeed, we wouldn't have founded this company if we hadn't believed that we had a recipe for how to leverage the semiconductor industry to make this. And now we have a feature complete platform, which we call Amiga, which has the world's best waveguides on it, the world's best edge coupler, the world's best source, the world's best detector, and the world's best switch on one platform. Unlike maybe in classical computing, once you choose an architectural path, you're on that path 10, 20 years in, and it's very hard to switch, and that no amount of money will solve that problem. It's about choosing the right path. We definitely chose not to take any shortcuts. The point was to build the ability, the platforms, the engineering organization that is able to execute without those shortcuts, because it's without the shortcuts that you can go the distance. It's the incredible hard work of an incredible team of people to be at the point where we can now make as many of those chips as we want that go into those facilities that we're building in Australia and Chicago over the coming couple of years. Quantum computing understandably has a reputation for being thought provoking and mysterious and alien and can feel like something that is forever going to remain a dream. You know, one of the things that I've enjoyed working for the company is to get up close with the technology for long enough that you can take the other perspective, which is this is basically silicon, glue, glass, concrete, steel. And it's very challenging, but the only thing you can do about that challenge is to get on with solving it. <laughs>